Today's topic. Fated Raids. Now, what are Fated Raids? For those of you who don't know, basically, retail we've got a system. Yeah, every season, new raid. Except, uh, last season, we do all the raids of expansion on a weekly rota. So it'll be week... Like, there'll be a week ABC that'll be going on. We keep going the cycle of ABC, ABC, ABC. Week A will be Season 1 raid. Week B will be Season 2 raid. Week 3 will be Season... Uh, week C will be free Season 3 raid. God, that rhyming does not help. <laughs> um, so that's coming back for um, retail again. After it was tested in um, Shadowlands Season 4. And the thing is, in Shadowlands Season 4, it wasn't exactly a popular season. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm going into discussion, and I'm, I'm not optimistic about Fated Raids. In fact, I think they're bad. Straight off the bat, I'm going to tell you, I think they're bad. I think they're horrible content, and it's one of the worst ways you could go about doing anything with WoW. Uh... Problem is, every everything in that fated raid was recycled. Well, fated season was recycled content. You look at Shadowlands season four. You had the three raids. You already spent like at a minimum of six months progressing in each of them. Uh, I think it was it's quite a bit more in Shadowlands. You had a minimum of six months. You'd already been burnt out progressing them. And it was like, hey, you're doing it again for another few months. On top of that, all old dungeons are brought back in the Mythic Plus pool, which you've already progressed, you've already gone through, you've already gotten all the gear from it and tried it all out. So there's nothing new to test out. And so, you've got a system where if you've been playing WoW well for a while, yeah, you, you just, like, there's nothing new to do. You've got to do stuff you've already gone through and done before. Just hellishly boring. And um, so yeah, that is coming back for Dragonflight season four. So think about it. Let's start. What are the merits to this system? What are the merits? Well, people like older content being relevant, people like the content of the expansion being relevant. So at least it's one season where every bit of content in that expansion is relevant. Yeah? Even though you've grinded the ever living shit out of it, yeah, you do have a season where you've got rele relevant content to play through. Um, or at least there's quite a fluctuation of relevant content. Problem is, the difference with how people actually want things to stay relevant is they want it so you can just go in at any time. But no, you've got to go through on week A, B, or C to do the raids of season 1, 2, or 3. You can't just do any of those raids at any time. No. Because they won't give you the right outlook. They'll give you piss poor gear. Um, not even upgradable. Like, you've got one week to try and progress through it. Now, I'm sure there's people out there like the World First Raiders or some of the more casual raiders who aren't going to be having too much of a stress of clearing what they want to clear within a week. But the vast majority of the guilds, like, even most cutting edge guilds are gonna be pushed a bit tight for getting a raid, like, fully cleared on Mythic in a week. How are you meant to realistically do that? It's mental how much is expected of you in that season like you are expected to clear three different raids yeah on three different difficulties with only a week to do each one before it resets again and that's problematic uh but it's not the only thing like you do also get affixes in fated yeah you get affixes so 
things could be different this time round. They could be very different, and I really hope they are. Because the affixes in Shadowlands, my god, they were horrible. They made every fight absolutely miserable to get through. Um, these affixes are just like another quick little mechanic you got to do. But it massively depends, like, how well you do it will make a massive difference on how well you get through the boss. I remember, so, I'm a very firm believer that if you want to go do AoE content in WoW, go do some Mythic Plus. If you want to go do your single target builds, go do some Raid. There was not an instance where you could do any single target because there was this one affix I remember where you had to kill a shit ton of orbs in a small amount of time to buff the entire raid, yeah? So you had to play the most degen AoE builds possible. I remember Demonology, instead of playing like a juiced up tyrant build to kill the boss, no, like your, your level of skill as a Demonology Warlock was how much you could spam implosion on that affix. It was horrible. It wasn't fun, it really was just pure degeneracy. And like, I don't even think the numbers you, you put out were enough to justify the dumb gameplay you had to do. Right. It, it really didn't make sense why they did it. I think the affixes that they had for Shadowlands horrible so i'm hoping that dragonfly at least gives us some good affixes but nah that's uh I, I like i'm not optimistic i'm terrified of it but it's just the fact that you have to go back and redo all these raids again like if they just kept it relevant in the first place as we discussed in uh, the prior video then Hey, guess what? Like, it wouldn't be so bad. It wouldn't be so bad to have to re-clear these raids. But having just all of them come back at once, you only get a week to progress through it all, it's horrible. Not only that, but as, as I also talked about the gear bloat in uh, the last video, you've now got three times the amount of raid gear that you have to focus on. Now yes, there's a Dinar system, where per season per character, you can buy three pieces of gear guaranteed. Does that really make up for things? Mm. I would say no. Honestly, I really would. And if you make a mistake on those Dinars, because people miscalculated the meta at the start of the season, you get those diners early, right? <laughs> you're done, you're done, mate. You are done. So, you can really easily fall behind just from bad advice being given out. Which is why I like anyone playing Freighted, I firmly recommend, like, really, really solidly recommend you have multiple of the spec you want to play. Um, if you actually want to push content. Genuinely. So, yeah, Fate is, is horrible. It really is a miserable experience. And I'm not sure why it's coming back when I do believe Shadowlands Season 4 was an all-time low for the game. Not just the expansion, yeah, but for the game as a whole. People didn't like it. I remember like trying to get into any content felt nigh impossible. Show from your main character for season four, you know, be bored inside two months. Yeah, like, that's the thing. That's the thing. You're, you're not even getting anything new to do or anything new to experiment with. It's not as, like, it's not even a change in season. Think about it here. If we want a seasonal approach like this in World of Warcraft, you have to look at other seasonal games. 
What other seasonal games do we have, for example? Mainly, let's take a look at ARPGs, as they are the kings of seasonal play, I'd say. It's the same content, day in, day out. Path of Exile. Look at the pinnacle bosses, they don't fucking change. The pinnacle bosses are what they have been for years. Okay, I need to get the quest item. Um, and yet, why why is it that that same content you do over and over again is fun? Because you could just roll a new character just like that. It's easy to go and swap your character in that game. What do you have to do to swap your character in retail? You need a steep gold investment. You need to do weeks and weeks of grinding for gear. Like not much, not not just like a month of grinding, but multiple weeks. And this is like even if you want to go and swap your character for a new season, you have to do a big grind. It's no small task. And then once 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 you've at least got one of the characters up, the catch up system to go and swap to something else is horrible. Like, it just gives you crumbs of what you need. So, we're in a system with WoW where it's, you've got both the same content and you're playing the same build, which for some people, they're content with it. They're fine with it. And, so, and they're probably, they're the ones that still play it. But for other people, it's like, like, what, what, what do you, what do you do? Is it really worth paying your sub for that season? Uh, my issue with it is that this season is now completely and utter dead. Impossible for any content you want to do, and it'll be exactly the same next season after two months. Yeah, you're right. Like, is the thing. Why would I want to keep playing the current WoW season? If it's going to be like hours upon hours upon hours of grinding, sorry, not even hours, like as I said, weeks of grinding to get like a different playstyle going in the current content to have a bit of a laugh. I mean, hell, like if I want to swap my character for Mythic Progression, which to be fair, not the most advisable thing to do, but if I wanted to do it just to stay interested in the game, was like, we're talking to Max earlier, he was saying he wouldn't even be able to do it within a month. A month! A month's a very long time. <clears throat> and the thing, like, you can't just swap characters through that. Like, I don't see that as being viable when you're doing the same content day in, day out. Here's, here's the thing, like, if they want the same content, then they have to make it so it's much easier to swap, like, the classes you play, and the specs you play, and the builds you play. Make that easier to swap around. If they don't want to have you swapping around so much, then keep giving in new and fresh content. Quite simply put, if everything is the same, all the time, people are going to get bored. This is why people go and play other games. I mean, hell. With seasonal games, it's hard to keep people fully engaged. Because once once you've done your goals for the season, what do you do? Like most of these games, you don't do it again on another character. Wow, has the potential for that. It really does. Wow is quite a social game, being an MMORPG. And there's much you could do if the game were in such a state to allow for it. Like, imagine you could just get into normal raids, get into mythic class, <clears throat> go go to your heroic raids, go to your mythic raids, without having to stress so much about farming again and again and again the same dungeons for a low drop rate piece of loot, which you just can't bloody get. There's no certainty you even get it, only to then get it when you go and boost someone's ult. Uh, on a stupidly low item level, so it's still crap for you. 
And then you finally get the item you're after, after like weeks and weeks of grinding. Only to then realize, oh, this sucks because, well, the, like, if you want to actually be optimal, you need to get the version from the vault. And because a lot of the content in the game requires you of such high gear, and you can't really skim past it with low gear, and there's that much of a difference between one different average item level. What, what, what do you do? What do you do? Why, like, what is the point of grinding through that system? Especially when you really, really get nitpicked, optimizing it to the nth degree, yeah? You really push yourself up to get one more item level. Guess what? That's that item level you've achieved can be easily obtained by quests in the next season. That's how it felt with Mythic Avarice. And I know, norm like I'm used to having to replace all my gear every season. Not the end of the world for me. But as as I've been getting more and more into the game, I've been feeling more and more that this is just a betrayal of my time, really. It, it's stupid. And I like I'm I'm starting to get frustrated. Maybe WoW isn't the game for me anymore. Like maybe maybe I'm not the target audience. But like who is at this point? People just getting into it or people who've already got a pre established career in playing? Um I hope the head is right and think the World Soul Saga is setting up a full reset possibly with a WoW 2. Yeah, I mean that would be insane if they can do it. I'm hoping that Season of Discovery um, might actually just be the WoW 2. They re-go through the entire game and fix all the mistakes they've made over the years. That would be insane. Unpopular opinion, Castle Nathria from uh, Shallon's better than any raid have had in Dragonflight? Yeah, I dispute that. I think Castle Nathria is one of the worst raids they've ever done, uh, personally. Um, Although it's nowhere near as bad as Fort of the Incarnates. Fort of the Incarnates has to be, like, taking the crown uh, for bad raids. Uh, I did think Aberus was an okay raid, and the Mirror Silver was really fun out, like, outside of the council boss, which they really shouldn't do council bosses anymore. But I'm, I'm a big hater of Castle Nathria. I don't like raids where it's like, hey, you, yeah, you want this one person in the team. You're going to have to go around and get fucked and deal with mechanics and just get screwed over all the time. You're not going to be able to have fun pressing your rotation, playing your class. You've just got to run around and deal with the mechanics we randomly decided that you should be dealing with. That, that to me, is bad design. Um, games should be about having fun. Not about stressing um, over some silly mechanic. Like, don't go wrong. Chains in uh, Sludge Fist were quite cool. Forced teamwork, great. Aside from that, Sludge Fist was a very boring patchwork boss. The only thing it had going for it was the chain mechanic. Uh, and I, I don't know, a lot of people disagree with my opinions on Nafria. And to be honest, it's good. It's, it, it's healthy for us all to be disagreeing and having differing opinions as if we all thought the same thing. Nothing would really get done, things would be boring, and there would be very little room for innovation. But yeah, fated, just not the way to go. And like, that's another thing. If, if you can still get stuff like curve and cutting edge from fated, when fated gives you these affixes to boost you through a bit further, then those achievements are now like they're much less valuable like, I don't know there's gonna be some of you sitting here like mm, curve isn't much of achievement like honestly shut up like there's so many people who play this game yeah and they don't even clear LFR yeah LFR is an achievement for some people you have to remember this it's still a big thing uh, there's still plenty of people who don't even get to max level in World of Warcraft. So, having all these overly juiced systems is insane. There's one thing I want to show you guys, actually, uh, which, when I was making the thumbnail for the last video, I thought it was ridiculous, man. 
So if I go to Dragonflight Gear System. Yeah. Hang on, let's uh throw on the display capture. Beautiful. Right, why has become so antisocial? It's all about gear and whatnot. I find it insane. Look at this man. Look at this. If I was a new player coming into this, I would give one look at this and be like, nah, nah, that, that's, that's stupid and complex. I, I am more inclined to go for the path of Exile Gearing System. It's like, it's not just you have to worry about these item levels, but you also have to worry about all the different stats. And then there's tertiary stats as well, which have an RNG ch chance of being on top of that. And then you've got the RNG Vault, which, by the way, you have little to no control over. You get a control over how many rolls you get in the vault, but you don't get much of a control over what you get. No, not at all. There's no target farming. I think something that needs to be removed is the Great Vault. The Great, like, or at least Great Vault giving higher item level. Uh, we've got way too many item levels in the game. This is just ridiculous. And, like, there's so many different sources and avenues for gear at this point. It's insane. And then, with Fated, that's three raids. Three raids of different gear. Do you know how big the loot tables are for these raids? Do you know how hard it's going to be to get this stuff? When you can go boss after boss after boss, and it will never even drop for your raid team. It took ages for Ballora Lost to drop once for a raid team. Once. It was insane. Yeah, that's another thing. Meta is just... It, it drives this game way too hard. And... Fated requires a really specific meta. One, one thing I found really stupid about Fated uh, in Shadowlands is if you didn't play meta, like, you would be a solid 30% below a team of zero skill but playing meta. Like, if you didn't have a, a demo lock or a destro lock or something, or like, if you didn't have that really high AoE burst onto that uh, Affix, which gave a big damage increase from the amount of things you killed. Right, you, like, you might as well have gave up for the season. You you weren't, you weren't in a position to get through the raid. You really, really have to go for the meta for that. And it's stupid. We're in a game where meta is already putting people out of play. The meta is literally making people unsub from the game. You might have remembered some of the crowd we used to play with, like, last season. Um, so many of them got so bitter about the meta that they absolutely hate WoW now. Like, seriously. They despise the game. I don't think they'd ever come back. And if they do, I don't think they're going to come back and be happy about the game. I think they're going to go around, they're going to try and convince people that the game sucks and that they should unsub as well. And then boom, there's more people unsubbing. That's not healthy for the game. And if they're not going to do that, then they're probably going to be on being miserable and then being toxic to more people in the community. And that's uh, even worse! And like, trust me, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm far from an angel in this topic. In fact, like, uh, I wouldn't, I'd go as far as I am, I'm definitely part of a problem, but... I don't think we've, we've got a game that's promoting people to enjoy themselves. Like, look, look at these graphs, man. <laughs> Why do I need a graph to understand the gear? What, like... This, this is the gear for a single patch, by the way. Not, not even, like, the entire expansion, but for one patch. You'll need four of these for an expansion. Like, look, let, let's see. How many different tiers do we have here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen different item levels of gear. Multiply that by four. Um, that's is that sixty-four? 
Yeah, 64. 64 different, different tiers of gear in an expansion. For certain pieces, eight of those are once a week RNG. Uh, well, eight of those tiers are once a week RNG. And then all your raid gear is once a week RNG. So, like, what's the incentive for you to keep logging on and playing and farming? Like, people will play alts if you make it easier. If you max out your character, what are you going to do? Like, you're either going to call it for the season, and if you're in that mindset, then you're going to call it for the season anyway, or you're probably just not even subbing at this point, but you would sub it if it were easier to get into. Um... Oh, actually, no, that is just it. That is just it. Like, if it were easier, those people would come back and sub. Hope there's something up there. Ask Mythic and Casual Guilds are starting to disband because they flat out don't want to play Fated again. Oh, yeah. Like, genuinely, the burnout is insane. I don't know many guilds that are lasting anymore. I used to be in contact with loads of guilds. Even guilds I didn't play in. But, like... Guilds that I'm just a part of their Discord. Maybe, like, and I, I join these Discords just from, like, pugging some nights. When I get drunk, I start vibing with some of the people in LFG. And they're like, oh, come join the disc. Like, yeah, sure. Like, usually it's when you get those really bad pugs. And there's just the one guy in there who's really calm as well. You, you vibe with them. And then they're like, hey, come join the guild Discord. Do some cases sometimes. Sure, why not? So, yeah. I like, I check out the Discord every now and then, and unfortunately I've seen quite a few of them that's like, sorry guys, we're done, we're burnt out, we can't keep going like this, uh, sorry guys, we aren't playing for Fated, that's the most popular one, we aren't playing for Fated, uh, we'll come back for the War Within, but Fated's not happening, people don't like Fated. What Blizzard do need to do, like, fine, no Fated, yeah, I know, devs are sitting here, but Fated lets us get another season in, hear me out, shorter raids, like, you got your three main raids, if, if, like, if you're carrying on with this lazy approach, which I don't think three raids and expansion is overly healthy, um, for the game, I think there should be more, but like, you got three raids. You let them go for go on for longer in a season. But your point five seasons introduce the mini raids, like the Trial of Valor, the Crucible of Storms. Bring them back into the fold. You know? And that could be a way to help bridge the gap between the current tier and the next tier. Yeah? Some gear that will just boost you up, and anyone who is struggling a little bit. And go into these raids, get some more gear to help them with the current season's raid and potentially get their full clear. Or anyone who's blasting through the uh, myth, like the current season's mythic, can go in for the challenge and then get their mythic kill on that. And these extra raids last from a 0.5 to another 0.5. Yeah? So there's still the chance for when the next tier comes about and you get your gear in there, you can come back and do the mini raid and then get your full clear there. People want to full clear things. People want to feel good about getting some of Azeroth's toughest challenges down. And I'm not saying make things stupidly easy, but when you've got bosses like Echo of Nelfarian, that requires a bloody weak aura to do that. It's ridiculous. That This is something ridiculous to saw as well. Oh, hang on. Let, let's let's recheck quickly. Uh, that we need to forget. Uh, I'll get into my point about uh, some weak auras in a second. Um, you had five myth raiders straight up say they don't want to do old raids that they've been doing for a year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have officers, um, say it as well. They, they, like, they've said it openly, like, oh, I'm not sure I want to play in the next season. Like, I'm already burnt out from it. Um, and the problem is, like, they shouldn't be old raids. Those raids should keep going from throughout the expansion, as I said in the prior video. And people wouldn't be so burnt out if those raids had kept on going, but they were just 
part of the progression system. People wouldn't mind clearing them again if they were still part of their progression system. And it's not exactly hard to write a guide to be like, right, here's what, here's like, here's your phase one set of gear, here's your phase two set of gear, here's your phase three set of gear. That, that can be done, yeah? You just use the prior abyss lists and some synergy to it. And even then, you don't need to be abyss, you don't need to be optimal. Like, just make it easier so that people don't have to go for this uber, uber, uber abyss, perfect stats, perfect everything. It's shambles, really. Like, there is a point where skill should be taking over more than gear. And that point shouldn't be locked behind months of RNG. Gamers fit to the top 0.1% in raiding, not the actual normal players. Yeah. Like, it's fitted for the minority. And when you cater to that sort of style, then you you ain't you ain't getting anywhere. Uh let me just bring up this week or thing. Raiding's gone backwards, man. Like, look, here we are in classic, yeah? I wanna go I wanna go do a raid. What do I have to do? Well, here we are. Get out East Londoner, my trusty rogue. Beautiful little thing. We gotta go, gotta do some quests. Yeah? Got got do some quests to level up. So we do some quests, we level up. Oh look the Severa. Uh fucking hunter in the barrens has told me to kill some Severas, get the hooves. Boom. Grab them, turn them in crossroads. Beautiful. We go through that journey to level up. Whatever. People aren't too much of a fan of the leveling side these days. That's fair enough. And to be fair, I think you can still make a very good MMO without a focus on leveling. Um, I do think it's important to have a leveling journey for the first playthrough of it. And um, with new expansions, force people to do the story. That this is one thing I was talking about uh, last night. I don't think they should give us more levels in WoW for new expansion. They should just make us do the campaign and play through it. Um, that way they don't have to bring out new talents and hero talents and stuff. And if they do want to give us some new power, fine, up to them. But I think they should force people to go through the campaign, get some more voice acting and cutscenes and whatnot, so like you actually get engaged in WoW's story, because it's a bloody good story. And that would be a better way to go about it. But yeah, so you level up your character, classic. Get the max level. What do you do? Well, you go and get some gear. Go do some dungeons. Cool. Right, I've got my gear. Now I can go into my raids. Go do my raids. Lovely. I, I've, I've done what I can. I've got the gear I've got. And as I'm progressing, doing this again and again and again, I will, guaranteed, clear all the content. It's going to happen. I don't have to invest half a year of my life to maybe kill the final boss um, of the expansion. Like, well, season, sorry. Don't have to do that. I, I can just put the effort in and I will get through and I will be rewarded for my time. You do not get rewarded for your time in retail. Um, even if you do get a beer item that you feel buzzing about getting, you end up losing it in the same expansion. Yeah, you're right. Like, the amount of hype you can get for some things. Like, I've got Ballora Loss at the moment. Guess what? I need to farm it again. It, it's not... It, like, that hurts me more, if I'm honest. It hurts me more that I need to go and refarm Ballora Loss. Like, the exact same piece of gear I already own just because Blizzard want a fated raise. That's painful. It really is painful. I wanna... Like, if I've got a piece of gear, yeah, I don't wanna have to get it again. I want, yeah, I want... Oh, whatever. I want my Assassin's Dagger of poisoning blood first, yeah. I want, if that's my best item, I want that lasting me, yeah? I'm fine with new things coming in and being better, yeah? I don't mind that. But, if this is the best item, 
I don't want to have to farm it again. I've got the Biss item. I should be able to keep that and enjoy it. If, if they come out and be like, right, all raids give you the exact same item level. But this raid, it, give, it gives you some special effects on this gear and thus making it better. Okay, as a hypothetical, this is not by, by no means the best way to do it. Bro, anyone who got Belora Loss and anyone who got Fear of Laugh, they have been so harshly cheated, yeah? Because of Fated, instead of spending half a million on either uh, Legendary respectively, you're spending a million gold in that expansion. You're spending, instead of, I don't know how many hours it was. <laughs> Let's say the average person that say put in like 50 hours, we now put in 100 hours. For one bit of gear that is a legendary, yeah, but it doesn't even feel like a legendary because everyone gets it, it's almost guaranteed. The quest line for it is just menial, dull, boring tasks, and the way to make it is a gold sink. Are you kidding me? This is just an item with an unuse effect that's honestly not got much law relevance like it's not like atiesh the staff of medivh yeah it's like thunder fury this blade of an elemental wind lord okay technically fur laugh is the axe of the main villain of the expansion yeah cost you half a million for transmog in a few months yep and if you, if you want to be optimal and fated, I'm sure that your guild is going to expect you to go and farm it again. And that's a million gold. Like, if you get a legendary in an expansion, I don't care if it's season 1, season 3, um, or whatever, that should last you until end game of the next expansion. That is my thoughts. Maybe even for the first raid of the next expansion. It's a legendary, like, that should be an insane piece of gear. Think, like, how long did Atiesh last people? And Thunder Fury? I'm fairly certain Thunder Fury was still Biss in Black Temple of Burning Crusade, a legendary you got in Molten Core, the first raid of vanilla World of Warcraft. Like, that's a legendary. That lasted. Well, I don't, I don't think the acquisition of the legendary is not as good as, say, Carrot Gosa, which is still a challenging questline to this day. I do still think it's a real legendary, compared to all the fake stuff like the Legion, the Shadowlands, the Mr. Pandaria, the Battle for Azeroth, um, and Dragonflight legendaries. These are fake. Yeah. Honestly, like... The smart thing to do, if you've already got Furulaf or Nazuru, go reroll. Like, don't waste your gold, don't waste your time. Your life's valuable. If you really want to do it, fine. You know what? It's your choice. And I hope you enjoy doing it. And I hope you enjoy the results. I really do. No spite meant by that. I really do think I like hope you can find some enjoyment from that. The average player is not. The average player is going to really hate that. And sure, a legendary is not for the average player. That is something I believe. The le a legendary should be for people who go above and beyond and really try and really put it out there as an individual. Keywords individual, because I don't think having a legendary is like... You have to kill the end boss of a raid. Is that good? Like, that... That requires a team just to start it off. And sure, if you, have to, if you need a guild to contribute to helping you get that legendary, and big teamwork to get that legendary together, then that's great too. Um, although I do think things need to be addressed so that there's not a matter of just hopping between guilds all the time. There, there really needs to be something going on where people actually stick to the guilds they go with. I know drama can happen, and there's nothing you can ever do about that. But when when the raids are this hard, uh, or like this 
demanding, you're going to get people swapping from guild to guild. Because if you want to clear the raid, like, you, you've got to swap through guilds. You can't be content. If you want a cutting edge, you've got to keep swapping through guilds. Uh, is it this way? If we get this season with all Dragonflight dungeons and raids, you already have the portal. It's the only reason why you should run Mythic Plus. Um, the reason you should run Mythic Plus is because um, if you want to go clear the raids, uh, you, you need the gear from it. Uh, and then if you want to get your be best gear, which will actually enable you to kill end bosses, um, or just Mythic bosses in general, then you need to keep farming it for an RNG chance that the thing you click once a week will give you a better item level on that piece of gear you've already gotten from Mythic Plus already. Um, and then also there's the arbitrary score, which you're going to go in and grind as a solo individual because you aren't lucky enough to have a team, uh, which means because it's score from team content, if you grind score as an individual, your score is less worth someone who did it in a team. Even if you're 3k and they got it at 1k, it is team score at the end of the day. Um, but, like, yeah, you should do that. Like, that that's the reason why you should do that. That's what Blizzard expects from you. You should be putting in that time and dedication to get a chance to actually get what you're going for. Um, so, yeah. And, um, yeah, so what So what if the portals weren't there? Uh, someone else didn't play, like, at the time when you could get them. So, you know, because they weren't around, they're entitled to have another shot. Um, and, we, yeah, yeah, things can't be exclusive in World of Warcraft anymore. you got to realise that. Uh, so, in the trading post, just remember that these portals will be put on there eventually. Uh... It's the only fair thing to do. If not, we then I think Blizzard might be putting it on the store. Uh, so yeah, make make sure you work overtime so you can pay them more money. You know, for the game where you have to pay for expansion subscription, um, then you know if you if you don't have the time to farm all the gold, then you have to buy wild WoW tokens as well so you can get the gold. Uh, then for some people, some people don't have the time to either run Mythic Plus or run raids, so. You need to go buy wild tokens to go get boosted through it so you can do the bit of content you want to do um so there's even more money you have to pay and if you want some cool cosmetics then hey guess what that's still more money you gotta pay oh and what's that um you've been invited to a guild on another server that's more money you want to play you don't like the race of your character anymore um well, guess what? Instead of it being a simple trip to the barber shop to just change your race or something, uh, that's more money you got to pay. Want to be in a different faction? I hope your credit card's ready. No. The like the the only thing I could actually say is somewhat fair is buying a level boost. Um, which is not exactly the hardest thing in the world to level up. Uh, you're just buying some of your time back, even though mm, I, I don't think it should be there. I think they should just make leveling better. Um, yeah. It's way overpriced for what it is as well. It's ridiculous. But, um, yeah. No, it's, it's really stupid how the game's gotten. I mean, for fuck's sake, is this an MMORPG anymore? That, that's what I've got to ask. I think Blizzard needs to pull the trigger, either stop having the game as an MMORPG and focus purely on making it a competitive game, or stop focusing on the competitive side of things and make it fully an MMORPG. Or there's a middle ground. As I say, I think there's still a place for um, rated Mythic Plus and rated PvP. Uh, al alongside with the casual gameplay loop. 
I think, like, it's great to have these rate forms of content. It keeps people logging and keeps people playing the game. But it can't be the main gameplay loop for everyone. No, here's the thing. Imagine if you wanted to do Battlegrounds as a PvP, -er. you were to get 1800 combat racing in 2v2s, 3v3s, or whatever. Like, that's stupid. So why do I have to go and get like 2k, 2.5k uh, Mythic Plus rating and in that process farm so many RNG drops a year in order to raise. I don't mind there being some requirement. There should be some requirement and some form of grind you have to do. But the grind we have at the moment is like... It's not excessive because that's an understatement. But I can't think of a word which goes above excessive. It, it's a concept which... Like... How do you honestly sell that? How... Like... How can you sell a game like that? I think the only way people actually get into this loop is because they see WoW and they think, oh wow, that's a really cool game. And they want to get into it. And then they see people doing all these big things, all these big streamers playing it, and they're like, oh, I want to be like them. And then they're like, they, like, they're in the cycle of it. Like, don't get me wrong, there are people who enjoy the grind of it. They're, and that's fine. The average person, won't know. And I think a lot of people would be a lot more grateful if they shifted it away from it. Grind is better than it was in BFA but still far from what it should be like in WoW. Like the changing of every piece of gear in each patch. Yeah, I can agree with that. Like, well, to an extent. I think... So, yes. Let's there, break this down. The grind is better than what is in BFA and the Legion, I'd say. Uh, you don't have to aimlessly grind for RNG legendary drops. You don't have to do stuff like Torghast from Shadowlands. Um, you don't have to do the infinite power grind, which is artifacts and Azerite. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say Az Azerite gear is something different, because, like, realistically, it's just gear of one use effects. You farm that anyway. You don't have the essence grind. Like, you, oh, and you also don't have the uh, corruption vision grind as well. So, things are better, yes. It's just you grind for the gear. But, Warlords of Draenor, okay, hear me out. Warlords of Draenor had a better gameplay loop. Why? You had your normal dungeons, your heroic dungeons, your mythic dungeons, and your raids. You grinded those dungeons. You got crafted bits of gear. Yeah. You put that together. You go do your raid. Amazing. Yep, down a minute. Yep. Um. So, yeah. Uh. The fact that, like, let me think, let me think of a really good trinket. Take your Rudigus Fragment, Season 2. Yeah? You can't get a Rudigus Fragment to drop. There is, like, what? There's at least 16 Rudigus Fragments in the game. Now, you can farm for 14 of these, but the two best versions of them... Once a week, you might get it. So if you get a Iridius Fragment Tier 14 to drop in a key, which actually couldn't even happen, you have Iridius Fragment Tier 12 to drop in a key, then you've got the, oh, well, at least I can upgrade it to Tier 14. When it's at Tier 14, you're still not like, well, I don't have the best Iridius Fragment. And it's a massive difference between the two. Come on. Let the gear drop be its own, own item level. Like, no more tiers of gear. It's stupid. It's so bad. 
It's not a healthy system. An item should be an item. Tune it correctly. Let people get it dropped once, and that's the drop they've got for the expansion. I don't mind every season replacing some of your gear, or most of your gear, even, to keep things fresh, yeah? Stat sticks are stat sticks. Stuff like on-use items, let's say, like, historically with Jyphus or Gavel, um, Ethereolaf, uh, uh, the fucking Aeronog Ring, you know? You get that once, you've got it. That's it. It, it should just drop and you've got it forever like and they could just balance it so that normal raids would just give stat stick items heroic could start giving some of the unused items and mythic could give all the stat sticks and all the unused items so you get all the bet you still get the benefit for pushing the higher difficulties but just more things be added to the loot table more cool things there's still an incentive to run it don't have to hope for the stars to align for something to drop on LFR. Fan, it's better than some shit on Mythic. Yeah. Like, like. It's silly. It, it really, it really is a dumb system we have at the moment. And I think in no world should we be really, like, farming LFR to get good gear. That, that, I think, is a bad thing to happen. But yeah, okay, so my be-all end-all. Let's summarise this with Fated, um, as I can't really do much, much longer of a discussion segment of the stream. Uh, so, <coughs> apologies, if I can, let me drink a bit. Point number one. Why Fated shouldn't be in the game. Too much gear. Too much gear to worry about. It invalidates all the grinds you've done previously in the season. More than just the new season coming out. Because it's identical gear that you have to refarm. Point number two. It's all content that you've worked your arse off to get through. Yeah? You've done all those raids. You've really tried hard at it. And guess what? It, like, doesn't matter. You gotta try hard it again. Point number three. In this try harding, you don't even get six months to try and progress through these raids. You get one week on a rota, and then it resets the next time in that weekly rota. So you gotta go again. Um. So yeah, that's why I think fate is bad. If you agree or disagree, more than welcome to comment about it, chat about it some more. But for now, I've got my dinner. Been great chatting about this, and I will see you guys soon.